What's up, everybody? We're back at it again on r slash Entitled Parents, and I got five crazy stories to share with you today, so let's just jump into it. Our first story comes from user See you later 99 Yes, it was as wild as the title sounds. Me and my boyfriend were at the zoo enjoying our day as we had some very rare sunshine in England. It was packed with screaming kids, and we were standing at the lion cage, and there was a kid screaming there because no one could see the lions, and the kids, I'm guessing mother, turned around and said to the child, if you don't stop crying, that scary bad man next to you is going to kidnap you and take you away, and you'll never see anyone you love again. Like, what? I overheard this and started laughing because I was so confused. My boyfriend just ignored it, and then the woman tapped him and said, go on, tell her that you'll take her away if she doesn't stop crying. When my boyfriend said no, she got mad at us? She then said we were a selfish couple and it's clear that we don't have kids of our own or else we would know what it's like to help her. She then proceeded to call us more names before grabbing the kid and storming off. What's wrong with these people, honestly? As if we would pretend to kidnap a child. That's how you motivate your kid to behave? You threaten him that he's going to be kidnapped by a stranger and never be able to see his loved ones again? That's the punishment. That's the encouragement. What a spectacular mother. I can't think of any other ways to have your child calm down in public and learn how to behave in public other than threatening their lives. There's literally no other avenues this mother could have gone in, right? No way, no way. I feel for the boyfriend, man, because that is so, so uncomfortable. God forbid anyone misheard what she said and genuinely thought that he was going to attempt to kidnap this child, then the whole day would be ruined because he would be in handcuffs. And the fact that the mother insinuated that this was somewhat normal is so weird to me. Parents do not operate this way, man. Nobody goes up to a stranger and asks them to pretend to be a kidnapper to help them discipline their child. Our second story comes from user Ori Kalkos. Hey guys, this is my first time posting here. After sharing this story on AITA, I thought I'd share it here as well. So take a seat, it's a long drive. I apologize in advance for any spelling mistakes, English is not my first language. I, 31 female, regularly travel by bus to see my fiance who lives in France until we settle down together next year. The problem is, is that I have a few psychological disorders that can complicate things, including schizophrenia, Tourette's, social phobias, including a phobia of babies. So I never travel without my medication, a headset that insulates me from ambient noise, and a little stuffed animal, a little fox that helps me stay calm and manage my various crises. I can't learn to drive due to both my physical and mental health issues, not to mention it's way cheaper. But with every bus ride comes some adventures. Saturday was the day I was going home with an eight hour bus journey from Paris to Belgium ahead of me. I had everything I need. No big deal. I can do it, I thought. The problem for me is the presence of a toddler with her mother. A child's screams and cries are very hard for me to bear, but I thought the baby was just plain bored because she didn't have anything with her. No toys, no plushies. Her mother was constantly on the phone. For a baby, it's a long time in her seat with nothing to do. So I just turn up the volume a little, being three rows behind the mother and her daughter who's getting more and more agitated and now is screaming. From what I heard from other passengers, her diaper was full and the mother couldn't change it even though the driver has assured her that if need be, he'll stop at the nearest freeway service area to allow the mother to give her daughter the necessary care. The child screamed and cried for more than 159 kilometers, around 98 miles, and her mother did nothing. Remember the fox stuffed animal? When I'm not stimming with it or holding it, I put it in my t-shirt so its head pops out. I took it with me to the bus toilet. Not the most hygienic thing to do, I agree, but I needed it to not have a breakdown because of my anxiety, keep her in my t-shirt, and then put her on my belt until I'm back in my seat. Walking past the mother and her screaming child who started yelling as if she broke a bone or something, and honestly, even I, who was afraid of children, started to be worried. I took my fox back in my hands, look out of the window, and the little girl's mother comes up to me and takes my fox out of my hands, saying, Can I have her? The kid's got a crush on it and is having a fit. I, what? No! I answered the mother politely and asked her if she'd be willing to give up the child's stuffed toy to calm somebody else's tantrum or even tears. She says, no, of course not, but she wants it and she's not going to stop crying until she gets it. It's okay, you can buy another one. I reached for my stuffed animal. She clenches her fingers on it. I heard a creak and feared it was damaged. Rising in anger and anxiety, I get up from my seat telling her that if she wasn't capable of handling an eight hour journey with her toddler on a bus, she should think again, reminding her of what the driver had said. So I took my plushie back, telling her that she just had to organize herself better and not to think as soon as her daughter points at something while crying, she's going to get it, especially if it belongs to someone. 
even more so if it belongs to someone with mental disorders. She called me a racist and an effing goth due to my clothing style and went back to her seat. What a way to get back home, huh? Racist? That word is so flexible now, man. That can just mean anything. It just means, please let me do things because I'm a different race than you. That's that's what it means now. It seems like both the bus driver and OP wanted the best for the child, but wasn't going to just capitulate to the mother's wants. Eight hours is a long time to be in the bus. You'd think she'd be a touch courteous by letting the bus driver stop at a rest stop so that this baby can be soothed. But no, life can never be easy. For whatever reason, people want to pick the hard way every day, and this woman expected another just stranger to give up their possessions to soothe their child. Makes no sense. That would never happen. In what world would that be reasonable? Our third story comes from user Crazy Ragdoll Lady. This happened a few months ago when I took my cat to a cat show. For those who don't know much about cat shows, when they aren't being judged, they hang out in large pop-up kennels. It's normal for parents to bring their kids to cat shows, but this cat show had so many kids running around, it was insane. I've never seen so many kids at a cat show. I have nothing against bringing your children to cat shows, just please stay with them and teach them to respect the cat's personal space. So anyways, my cat was sleeping inside of his little cat cave inside of his large pop-up kennel. I went to go to the bathroom, and when I came back, two children had unzipped the kennel, and one was petting my cat. Why would anyone ever open a pet carrier and touch a random cat they don't know? I would have never done that as a child. I don't know where their mom was, but the girl was saying that my cat wanted attention, and that's why she unzipped it. But he was still inside his little cat cave that was inside of the pop-up kennel. They're lucky I have a ragdoll cat. They're extremely chill, cuddly, social, and known as the puppy of cats. Additionally, my cat volunteers with kids once a week, walks on a leash, and vibes with literally everyone. I can't describe how upset this made me. I want to add that I've never had any issues with kids at any other cat shows but this one. But another thing is that when I was taking my cat to be judged, a kid touched his tail and I had a couple other kids try and ask to pet him as I was taking him to be judged another time. Also, I had to fuss at some kids who went to another person's pop-up carrier and had their hands, faces pressed against the mesh to see the cat inside because that's probably very intimidating for the cat. I want to say again that I've never had issues with kids at other cat shows. I don't know what happened at this one, but for some reason, there were so many kids. I would like to add that most kids did have parents with them and they were behaving well. To be honest, the problem's going to solve itself. All it takes is a couple of kids getting, you know, clawed in the face and eyeballs for people to chill out, for people to understand that cats aren't super friendly with humans that they don't know. But to be honest, I can't imagine not knowing what my kids were doing at a event where there's other just random people and random animals. I would probably just stick with my kid to make sure that they're not harmed by a creature that they think is cute. It's irresponsible. I don't understand why people just operate that way. Your kids need supervision. They don't know how to behave. That can lead to your child or somebody's pet being harmed and that would just ruin the whole day. All because this parent in particular did not want to be a parent. If you don't want to be responsible for knowing where your child is at every given moment or responsible for their actions, don't bring them to the cat show. Our fourth story comes from user Lightning Fall. My mom knew about my doctor's appointment and that I was going to be examined, clothing would be removed, and she still wanted to accompany me last minute for support, and I couldn't argue with her to stay home or I would be late. I thought that she would wait outside, she's done so before, but for other types of appointments, but instead she tried to go in with me. The staff kept her out and later she knocked on the door and walked into the appointment saying that she needed to tell my doctor about my family medical history. I had already told my doctor all of it. She was taken out of the room and the door was locked. When I left the hospital, she wasn't there anymore and was upset that I kept her out. I told her it was a very private thing to be asked about your past relationships and getting examined. I'm extremely shy with my body and it's always hard for me to do these things. So of course I didn't want her there or would even think for her to want to be there. She told me she wants grandchildren and she's my mom. Therefore, it's not that big of a deal for her to be with me during my visit and then I should stop acting like my body is sacred since I would need to get used to other people, medical staff, seeing it. She also told me that my dad is always with her whenever she needed to be examined so I should allow her to be there with me. I told her a spouse is way different than a parent and that she hates to talk about and has shamed me in the past. She is very religious and hated to see me with anyone. There was no reason for her to be there. 
Edit. I wanted to clarify something. At the time of the appointment, I was temporarily living with my family, so she knew I was going to the hospital and forced me to tell her why. If I disagree with her, she will try to make my life hell and make my family turn against me. Also, the appointment was not related to fertility or pregnancy. I don't live with them anymore, so she doesn't know about my life as I went low contact. Boundaries, guys. Just because you have a kid doesn't mean you can violate that child's boundaries. Just because you created this life doesn't mean you can be completely authoritarian and impede on their privacy. You just can't do it. It's a fantastic way to lose contact with your child. It's really strange that the mom was talking about wanting a grandchild when the appointment wasn't even about fertility. Now it's even more strange because we really don't know why she was there. Was it to humiliate her daughter? Was it to, I don't know, discipline her daughter? What was the motive? This is very, very weird, and I'm so glad that OP has cut contact nearly completely. Like, you just can't interact with this person anymore. Otherwise, you're just going to have so much undue stress on your life. Our final story comes from a throwaway account. My fiance, 35 male, and I, 33 non-binary, are getting married in two weeks in our backyard. We'll be having a catering spread for our reception afterwards. We decided to have a dry wedding for two reasons. My mom is an alcoholic who is known for making a scene when she gets drunk, and my fiance has a brother who binge drinks and has had alcohol poisoning on more than one occasion. He doesn't drink all the time, but if he starts, he can't stop until he either passes out or someone physically restrains him from getting more. I also have an uncle, mom's brother, and a stepdad who are in recovery and don't need the temptation. Neither fiance and I are big drinkers, so we decided to just avoid any problems and just have a dry wedding. We will have a less than dry reception party slash honeymoon with some of our friends later on. All of our families have been supportive. My uncle was especially grateful for us doing this since he takes his recovery very seriously and has been seven years sober. I sent out wedding invitations four months ago and said it would be a dry wedding and asked people to not bring alcohol. Now today I get this call from my mom who I also sent an invitation to four months ago. Is it true you're not having alcohol at your wedding? Yes, fiance and I decided we didn't want alcohol during our special time. That's so silly. It's going to make your wedding boring. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but my fiance and I have made our decision and we want everyone to feel comfortable at our wedding. Clearly, you don't care about my comfort. What if I want to have a little drink to pass the time? Like you did at a different uncle's wedding where you got so drunk and made a horrible scene calling uncle's wife a gold digger? It wasn't my fault. They made the drinks there too strong. Right. Mm -hmm. I really wish you would address this need to have alcohol wherever you go. I don't need to have alcohol. I just think your wedding would be boring without it. You want to have a fun wedding, don't you? It will be a fun wedding. We don't need alcohol to have fun. This is so stupid. Why should everyone else be punished just to make it comfortable for a few people? It seems like you care more about your uncle and stepdad than anyone else. Or maybe I just want to avoid any scenes. I just told you that wasn't my fault. Just like your DUI wasn't your fault. How dare you bring up that difficult time in my life? I was going through a lot emotionally. What the heck is wrong with you kids? You need to mind your own business. If I want to drink, that's my business. Is that right? Well, my wedding is my business. We do not need alcohol here. That's final. I can't stop you if you decide to pregame my wedding, but I've already made it clear to uncles and brothers that if you cause a scene, you are to be made to leave. Oh my God, why do you kids hate me so much? What did I ever do to deserve to be treated like this by my children? Are you really ready for me to go down that list? None of you understand. None of you will ever understand. I'm the mother of the bride. I should be treated better than this. I think I've treated you pretty well during this process. I've acquiesced to your boyfriend, whom I don't even know, coming to my wedding. I've even given in to some of your other demands. So please, tell me how you've been mistreated. You didn't invite me to go dress shopping. The mother of the bride always goes dress shopping with her daughter. I barely even know your fiance because you never bring him around me. How do I know that you're marrying the right person? That's because aunt made my dress. Well, isn't that just special? As for the rest, I think you know why. We aren't really close enough for you to have any say in who my significant other is. You know, honestly, mom, I'm done with this conversation. If you really feel that strongly about this, I understand if you don't want to attend my wedding. Oh, I bet you'd like that, wouldn't you? One way or another, you will respect me as your mother. Sure, mom, I'm hanging up now, bye. 
Guys, I am so livid right now. I have half a mind to uninvite her. I spoke to my dad and her brother. My uncle thinks her drinking is getting really bad again and has been wanting to hold an intervention. I told him I'm focused on the wedding right now, but I definitely agree that this was out of line and something needs to be done. What do I do? I don't want her ruining my wedding, but I am so tired of dealing with this. Sorry, this is probably above Reddit's pay grade, but I just needed to vent. There were subsequent updates to this story where OP officially uninvited her mother to the wedding. And she immediately went on Facebook and said that being a mother was a thankless job and that her daughter and other family members do not love her. While it is a difficult decision to uninvite your mom from your wedding, OP did the right thing. Why risk having this special moment ruined by a drunk parent when you can just uninvite the drunk parent? It makes the most sense to me. I get how that might hurt, but at least everybody else will have a good time and everybody else there is willing to respect your boundaries and respect the rules that you placed to make sure that everybody is comfortable. And for whatever reason, your mother could not sit with that. Your mother could not deal with that, so she had to go. Addiction is serious, and I really hope that you guys will be there for her for that future intervention. She needs to hear it. Something has to change because she just missed out on her opportunity to see her daughter get married. That's a once in a lifetime thing, and she missed out on all of it because she can't put down the bottle. But hey, I want to know what you guys think about all five stories that you've encountered today in this episode of r slash entitled parents. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I love all of that intelligent, awesome conversation that occurs down there in every single one of these videos. And if you want me to cover any other text specific subreddits, let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you guys at the end. What's up everyone, it's your boy Aileris aka Panda Daddy, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know in the comments down below and leave a like if you liked the video. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing. And if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you can get these notifications every time. It is finally spooky month, it is finally October, so I think personally, you guys are overdue for a little spooky marathon. Go ahead and tell me what type of content that you want me to cover during this month that you think is spooky in the comments down below. I am open to all requests. We need to make this month as scary and spooky as possible. And to be honest, I wouldn't be able to do that without my Patreon supporters, so a big thank you to Zenith2A, Mr. Sandman, Mike, Sleepy Dragon, Power Lover, Sherry Morrison, Tron Destroy 23, Fitz Chivalry, Code Connor Purvis, S16, Squish, Rare Days, Mr. Bean, My Golden Experience, James Tucker, BMX30, Cinnamon Sticks, Scott, the Fake Musician, Buckethead, Samantha Bellhart, Admin Fanneker, Bloody Hunter, Keely, Dunderness Hawk, and Noah. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want to help support the channel, there's two links in the description. One in my merch store and one in my Patreon. Both funds go directly into the channel so we can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.